Yeah, it's a great question. You know, how do you choose a grip? I mean, and I think there's two ways to look at it. The first way is the performance of the grip, and the second way is the size of the grip. And we'll focus on the performance of the grip right now. Um, you know, you need to ask yourself, A, do you play in a lot of wet weather or humid conditions? Um, and the second thing is, what kind of grip do you want as far as responsiveness? You know, as far as the feedback from the shot, right? Um, so starting with the wet weather performance, you know, A, do your hands sweat a lot, B, do you play in a lot of humidity or wet weather? Um, if you do, if slippage is an issue as far as wet weather, then you need to be playing a hybrid grip that has cord or a full cord grip. And we always get this question at the PGA show. I mean, whenever we launch a new product, they'll come up to us and be like, well, how does it perform in, in the rain or wet weather? And you know, my answer is kind of funny because I would never tee off in the rain. You know, I just, I'm not a rain player, but you know, granted you are gonna get stuck on the course at some time um, in a shower and you wanna have some type of performance in the grip to mitigate some of that moisture. Um, and that's why you need to look at the hybrid grip because when I talk about cord, I'm talking about cotton fiber that's in there. And what that cotton fiber does is it, it really absorbs or helps channel that moisture um, to somewhere other than the surface of the grip so your hands do not hydroplane. And the same thing it is when your hands are sweating um, because there are some heavy hand sweaters out there. Um, and if your hands sweat a lot, you're, you, know, you can literally hydroplane your hands on a grip if you don't have that cord to help mitigate the, the moisture. And the other thing with that is the texturing on the grip. Um, you, know, you can play a grip that does not have any cord, but it has a very heavy texture and that helps channel the moisture. But the, the best performing grip that you can have in wet weather or with uh, you know, your hands that really sweat is something that has cord in it. And the best would be a full cord grip. But a lot of players out there don't like a full cord because it's very rough on their hands. Um, you know, it is a little bit firmer for sure. Uh, but you know, if you're worried about slippage as far as wet weather or hand sweating, there is no substitute. You need to be using a full cord grip. So the other thing would be, the, um, as far as performance goes, is the responsiveness of the grip. Um, when I talk about responsiveness, I'm talking about, you know, what happens when you actually hit the shot and you can, you know, you can feel that feedback, the impact, the strike of the golf ball. And some of the grips we make are firmer where you're going to feel everything and some of the grips are softer um, where it's more of a comfort play. And you can think of it like suspension on a car, you know, with a race car, it's a very tight suspension, like a Porsche or something where you can feel every bump on the road. And the other piece of that would be, you know, a softer suspension car like a Cadillac or a Buick or, you know, you're just kind of riding around like you know, on a cloud or something. You don't feel anything. It's very comfortable. And golf grips are the same way. Um, so, you know, for example, the CP2 line is the softest grip that we make. It's, it's a, more of a comfort grip with performance properties, but it is going to feel more comfortable in your hands. It's softer. Or you go to the other end of the spectrum, you have the Z-Grip Cord, which is the firmest grip we make. It's very, very firm, a ton of responsiveness. And that one would be classified as, you know, as a high performance grip. The guys on tour want that, so they can tell everything that's happening at impact. Uh, but every one of our, our line, every model in our lineup um, has some sort of performance built into it. Uh, but you need to start with wet weather performance and then responsiveness, and then you can dial it in from there. Yeah, sure. It's a great question. And it, it's an interesting one because there's almost this dark art to, to fitting somebody for a golf grip when you talk about size. And I always tell people, you know, like they immediately get into it. Like, you know, okay, are you a midsize? Are you a standard, undersized jumbo? That should be the last thing that you talk about when, when fitting a grip. You need to talk about the performance first. That's the most important piece. Because as Golf Pride is the worldwide leader in, in grips, it's a given. You're going to be you're going to be given that option to have every single size that we make, undersized. Um, you know, there's even a junior, but junior, undersized, standard. Then there's a plus four that's in between a standard and a midsize. Then there's a midsize. Then there's a jumbo. So everything in our range is going to have that size option. We'll worry about that. You don't need to be worrying about the size of the grip. And I also kind of rewind a little bit and talk about tour for a second because they're very interesting. Um, 99.9% .9 of the grips that Golf Pride sends the tour and over 80% of the guys play our stuff and we don't pay them to play it, they play it because it's the best. But 99.9% .9 are standard size grips. The best players in the world, the, t the tip of the spear, those guys like standard size grips and they might build them up a little bit from there, but they're not playing midsize or jumbo grips. We do not send midsize or jumbo grips to the PGA Tour. Now that doesn't mean anything on the retail side of things because your general consumer you know, they very much like midsize and jumbo grips. It feels very comfortable in their hands. 
but the best players in the world, and some of these guys are very, you know, big athletes, you know, big hands, uh, they prefer standard size grips. And they build them up a little bit, but most of them prefer standard size grips. And there's even some guys out there that like grips that are smaller than standard size. They're literally pencil thin. We'll use some special core bars to make these guys these grips where you install them and it feels like you're gripping the shaft. Uh, but those guys out there really like to be able to feel that club, feel everything that's happening at impact, to really get it in their fingers. Whereas your consumer likes something that's a little bit bigger, it's more comfortable in their hand, easier for them to hold. Um, but you know, when you talk about sizing, you know, you first you want to dial in the performance, and then you can get to the size. And I always tell people, before you go all in with a new size, you know, you need to try it on a couple clubs. You can try it on a seven or try it on a drive or a wedge, and make sure that's the right feel for you. Because the fact of the matter is, most people out there would be okay probably playing a standard size grip. There's obviously going to be some guys with uh, or, or ladies that have larger hands that need to transition into a plus four, a midsize, or a jumbo. But I think the standard size is a good place to start, and you can kind of dial it from there. Because all the, the grips that we make for the OEMs, they're standard size, right? You know, if you buy a, a set of clubs off the rack, it's going to have a standard size grip on there, and that's a good place to start. So most people, when they you know, started the game, they were playing a standard size grip, and they kind of built their game around that. You know, you know, people don't buy a set of clubs off the rack that have jumbo, but now you can get custom fit in any size you want. But you really need to kind of feel that grip. And, and don't just feel it on a half shaft in a store. You need to feel it on that club and feel how it performs during a swing if it's a different size. But once you try some grips and dial in that size, then you go all in and get the whole set done. Um, but you know, always you know you want to you know start with something and then experiment from there. But um, you know, as far as like a general rule, you know, you know I always you start with people's glove size. You know, if you're if you're you know in a medium um, medium cadet or whatever, you know, you, you should be playing a standard size grip for the most part. Uh, but if you start to get into like a large glove or an extra large glove then you need to start looking at midsize and jumbo grips because the fact of the matter is there are some people that have just such massive hands that it literally is like a pencil, uh, you know, a standard size grip is like a pencil in their hands and they need to be trying some midsize or jumbo grips. But the fact of the matter is we make the sizes, different sizes in every product range that we have. So I wouldn't wor I'd worry less about the size of the grip and more about the performance. And once you dial in the performance and then you can really kind of dial in what that size is going to be because it's available in everything. Mm -hmm.